Sure. So I have a degree in recording arts and technology from Tri-C. So I was doing music recording um, before that. And we had a recording studio and we were, you know, making, you know, all sorts of videos and audio content, not just music. We were doing all sorts of stuff. We were doing commercials and, you know, funny commercials, (laughs) you know, weird kind of stuff. Those are actually some of my favorite, um, tracks yeah we had uh, a, we had an album and every other track was like a stupid commercial bushes it, baked beans yeah it was just me and my friend nate just sitting in a in his <laughs> dorm room looking around the office or looking around his dorm room and just like looking at things and be like oh let's make a quick 20 second beat and put a commercial over aquafina it. i remember aquafina, aquafina was good. i think you know we we promoted garbage bags garbage bags yeah that was a big was one stuff. you are now listening to the hey now hey now hey now hey now hey now, hey now. Hey now. Hey now. Hey, 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 hey now. now. Hey now. Hey now. Hey now. Hey now. Hey now. The Hey Now Media Podcast. Yes. Hey, what's up, everyone? Matt here from Hey Now, and you're tuned into the Hey Now Podcast. We have an awesome episode for you today, really special opportunity. We are here at Evergreen Podcast Studios uh, recording our very first podcast in a studio very cool and not only that we have none other than matt jaffe content producer tetherball champion uh allegheny state park hero and um not only that but the producer of this very podcast welcome is this the hey now podcast or is this our new podcast the brower hour no this is the hey now podcast this is the hey now podcast okay cool welcome thank you Thank you for having me. Sure. So um, for those of you that don't know, Matt's actually one of our longest standing employees. He was actually one of the first employees. Um, and, and prior to that, he was a friend of mine pretty much as far as I can remember. I think there was a thing called Playgroup uh, before preschool. Um, so Matt, I guess, do you remember how long you've been with Hey Now? I think it'll be eight years in November. Eight or nine. Wow. And we've only been around 10. Yeah. And what were you doing prior to that? Prior to that, you stole me from Nordstrom. Very cool. I was um, doing visual merchandising. Nice. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. And how do you like that switch? How did I like that switch coming over? Yeah. It was pretty crazy because visual merchandising, I was on my feet all day, you know, up and down on ladders, um, putting clothes on mannequins doing all sorts of stuff like that and then I came to an office job and it was a little bit of a it was a little bit of a culture shock <laughs> and uh we you know we had a small office right we had a small team the dungeon we had a little bit of a dungeon um it wasn't that bad yeah I mean we the, made it good yeah we made it we made it good and then we grew and got a better office right so we actually had a pretty tight office until the the pandemic and Oh, oh, I, yeah, I like yeah. that one. That was cool. Yeah, our offices just kept getting better and better. Right. Yeah. So do you, I, I guess, tell us a little bit about why I would have approached you for a creative agency and what's some of your creative background? Um, where did all that start and, and come from? Sure. So I have a degree in recording arts and technology from Tri-C. So I was doing music recording um, before that. And we had a recording studio and we were, you know, making, you know, all sorts of videos and audio content, not just music. We were doing all sorts of stuff. We were doing commercials and, right. you know, funny commercials, <laughs> you know, weird kind of stuff. Those are actually some of my favorite um, tracks. Yeah, we had, uh, a, we had an album and every other track was like a stupid commercial. Bushes, it, baked beans. Yeah, it was just me and my friend Nate just sitting in, a, in his <laughs> dorm room looking around the office or looking around his dorm room and just like looking at things and be like, oh, let's make a quick 20 second beat and put a commercial over Aquafina, it. Aquafina, I remember Aquafina, Aquafina was a good. Aquafina, I think, you know, we, we promoted garbage bags. Garbage bags, yeah. That was a big that was, one. That was a really good one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was, uh, we, we were doing a lot of music content and production. And I don't know, what other creative background did I have? Um, well, it was soon after that that we started working with all those artists and we opened the studio on Coventry and 
I mean, we were having like there were some pretty big names coming through that building, sure. and then they all got kind of signed to labels, mm -hmm. and you know, we were working with Purple Films, and and just oh, I remember we moved from that studio to the duplex, and we bought a duplex, yeah. and we had this like artist house, yeah. and uh, we had a studio on one side, the artist lived on the other, and we were just doing all sorts of production work, creative work, um, and honestly, that's what. Hey now kind of spawned out of as well yeah that was a pretty cool concept you had over there it's just like a place where like artists could live and make music and right do stuff you had a chef over there right <laughs> jake wasn't jake living yeah there? jake lived there he made everyone food we're i mean we we're just trying to create any um opportunity for the artists to create art and and just not have any roadblocks like you know paying for rent and food and all of these things put you in a situation where you have to work at a pizzazz or you right. have to work at giant eagle yeah. um and not recording and the only thing that was putting these artists on was like recording and shooting videos and shooting photos and having cool graphics um so if you're not making the art then like are you an artist i guess um right. so yeah that was the idea um and we actually um everyone kind of moved on and we sold that house um we me and my dad renovated it and we sold that oh nice as well so i mean it, oh, i didn't know you owned that house yeah hmm. yeah we bought it and just tried to to kind of break even on it um and yeah it was a huge opportunity i think for everyone to kind of focus on that so during that time is that when you were working at nordstrom's yeah i was working at nordstrom during that time okay because i was working with nate uh and then he left and went back to pa Right. So I kind of like had to figure out my own situation. Right. And then I think it was me and Tez went to PA and, and got Nate back to Cleveland. Um, and that's when we started doing all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so prior to college and, and the production stuff, I mean, even in in fifth grade, you were highly creative. I mean, yeah, where... I liked drawing. I liked, you know, writing not books, but you know, short stories. Right. I mean, we were writing of... some uh, <laughs> funny songs back then, too. Yeah, we would write funny songs <laughs> going back to, like, yeah, middle school. We were we were writing raps, and, you know, we didn't know what rap was. Right. A couple right. Of, like, this is like, guys. 96, 97. Yeah. Was, yeah. That's so funny. So do you, where do you feel like it comes from? I know you played keyboard, you played bass. Right. I also, we were in a band together. I grew up uh, playing drums in the band. Oh, yeah. Dr I forgot. You were one of the only lefty drummers I've ever known. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's a lefty, <laughs> no, lefty drummer? Sweet. All what right. about bass guitar? You play bass guitar? Yeah, yeah. me too. Oh, Right-handed. Yeah. <laughs> Right-handed bass guitar. The, why? I don't know. Why does yeah, that so happen? I'm ambidextrous as well <laughs> in that sense. Like, I play some instruments left-handed, some instruments right-handed, right with, right with my left. Right. But, yeah, I was in... Uh, band yeah or urban jazz uh it was your dad and dustin's dad oh yeah we started combined. a band urban jazz and that Herb to me that jazz. was as we keep going back i mean that was my role like i wasn't a musician right i i decided to be a singer because you guys didn't have a singer yeah and it, I it started out me goose our friend goose and our friend dustin and uh, we were all in the band and we right we're like let's start a band we're right. good friends and we like to play music and we started a band and we didn't have a singer right and i think we <laughs> we were like auditioning uh, other singers like i think uh matt wagner was oh, a singer yeah, i remember was our that. singer for a minute right and we were just like yeah this isn't gonna work <laughs> and then i think also we tried to have Pat Welsh. Mm. Those those two take the band in a very different direction. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> yep. And then we're like, well, let's just, we, we already tried one Matt. Let's try another Matt. Right. And that was it. Right. You came in and because you were really good at, you were really good at freestyling. Right. We would drive around. They called me Freestyle Master. I never heard anyone call you that, but... <laughs> You definitely would drive around in your, what was that, a Corolla? Yeah. No, 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 Cavalier. In your Cavalier. Yeah. We'd ride around in your Cavalier, and you would just start rhyming 
street names and businesses mm -hmm. and it was just like second nature to you it, it had to be in the car though had we to had be in to the be car. driving yes i think and i had to be driving right like wasn't yes. i driving yes yeah. you were driving also doing some other things at yeah, the same it, time it's not you're doing a lot of stuff not recommended i i did since find out uh found out about a year ago i have adhd so i think i think yeah. that driving turned my brain off and turned something else on adhd is a um, superpower yeah it's a superpower they they uh they think that that's yeah. what they tell me. Um. <laughs> yeah, but you you then channeled that energy into the lead singer of our band. Right. Which was basically you just doing the same thing you were doing in the right. car, just and, writing and it. And just writing it down and coming up with themes. We yeah. came up with yeah, themes. Yeah, yeah. Every song had like a theme. A theme, yeah. And, and it, it was – I was never a musician. I was never a good singer either, um, <laughs> which, I mean, I feel bad for the people that listened, but – um, it was fun. It, it was high it, energy. Yeah, it was super high energy. But the the whole idea was like I was, we were just four friends, and I was just hanging out while you guys played. And I was hanging out with like Goose's brothers, mm -hmm. and I would just start next to Goose's brother. I would like hit him, I'd be like I would start freestyling over what you guys were playing. And he was like telling Goose, "You gotta get Brower in there. You gotta get Brower." And I, I didn't want to necessarily be a musician. I looked at it as a business. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, there's a problem. Right. You don't have a singer. Yeah. Most bands have a singer. Yeah. You don't have lyrics. You don't have arrangements. Yeah. You guys were just jamming out. There was yeah. no arrangement of verse, chorus, verse, right. chorus, whatever. Um, and so while the singing wasn't great, we we remember we were performing at Peabody's, um, and we performed in my backyard. We had yeah. concerts in my yeah, backyard. That was, that was cool. Um, I we have had a picture a, of that. That's a good. That was a good. Maybe one. I'll put up the picture in this podcast. That'd be amazing. Right now, I, I would love to even see that. <laughs> right there um so yeah it was really cool and i feel like that sort of ingenuity around like getting the school to let us perform at like the the school stuff in the theater and recording it and putting it out on cds yeah. and like cutting that up is the same stuff we're doing now with the macro to micro and it really is yeah. It's really the same thing. We just scaled it. Right. It's just not, you know, teenagers playing funk rock. <laughs> right. Yeah. It was fun, though. Right? So we, we then went to Kent State. You left and went to OSU. Um, I don't remember. It was when you came back to OSU, that's when you went to tri from tri uh, OSU to Tri-C. Yeah, I went to uh, Ohio State. Um, I was supposed to go there for school, mm. but I didn't do much of that. No. That was the Kent was the end of your school, I think. Correct. Well, I almost <laughs> didn't make it through the first year of Kent either. It's true. But yeah, so we went to I went to Kent for a year, Ohio State for like a year and a semester, and then I was basically saying, you know, I had I was making beats on a friend's keyboard right. when I was there. My friend Josh Fisher, he had this really cool. I think it was a Roland. It was like a keyboard with drum pads on it this is sweet and i was making right. beats on it and he was like whoa man he's like and how he's do, how josh do you know? is doing pretty well now too yeah he's like how do you <laughs> how are you doing this i'm like i don't know it's just like it comes natural right so i don't know if he talked me into finding a program or something but i was really getting into making beats and music right. and i thought i could be an engineer and i was like i could do this like i I also feel like I could make people's music better. Right. So I got into the Tri-C program and went from there. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, that seems to be a really good program. I remember um, – mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember. One of my other friends was in that too, and I went to just watch his senior thesis. Yeah. His senior thesis was he had to perform an, uh, fully – this was – what was it, 2006, 2007? So it was like – the the big innovation was he had to perform an entirely digital track live. Oh wow! <laughs> I mean, that's literally yeah. what people do. That yeah, that's, that's not cool. a thing. Like right, right, right. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> watch out. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that was really cool. So fast forward to today, what are you doing creatively now for Hey Now Media? So for Hey Now Media, I am doing content production, which entails a lot. A lot of social media posts, graphic design. 
Um, I was actually talking to Noah about it earlier. It seems like we are, the company kind of is transitioning to more video. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing basically all the video production, not all of it, but most of the video production I'm doing for us. So lots of graphic design, lots of video production. And it's cool because some of the video production we have to do kind of branded to our other clients. But then we have our Hangout podcasts and our Hangout videos where we can basically do whatever we want. We got free range to do anything creative that we want. So that's been pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah, and I'm just like, I'm kind of, kind of learning on the fly. I don't have a formal background in in video recording, but it's been pretty cool so far. Right, and it's, that's that's been the theme so far. I mean, we started, you were the project manager um and then we kept on moving you more into a creative role Mm -hmm. where you taught yourself how to be a graphic designer how to be a video editor um using your audio engineering skills and and the the music that you select is always amazing right um that we put into the video so that's that's been really cool to kind of watch you move back into that kind of role what is your favorite thing about working for hey now oh my favorite thing about working for hey now is really the creative freedom i have uh, e- I mean, even when it comes to doing graphic design for the brands that we have to kind of stick to brand guidelines, there's you still give leeway. If something is cooler mm-hmm. than what the brand guideline is, right? it's not like, no, we can't do it. We have to stick to the brand. It's kind of like, let's check it out. Like, do right. what you got to evolve. Yeah, do what you want to do. If you think that something is going to work for this brand, it's not like I'm taking you know, a brand that has its own guidelines and saying, let's do something that's completely different and making it look like a different brand. You know, you give me the freedom to elevate and go, we go back to the client the client might say yes, they might say no, but at least you guys let me do it. You give me the chance. So I think that's pretty cool. Nice. Um, Have you gotten into any of the AI tools and and what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I've been using AI a little bit. Um, Wrote a couple blogs using some AI, mm. uh, ChatGPT, using that, and you know I've tried to use it for a few things for graphic design as well, but it's not really quite there for like creating branded content out of, from scratch. Right. So I don't know when that's gonna happen, but like you can use it. I think there's some AI programs now where you can take an image, and you can say make this image change the background to be more like this right or make that person i think even canva has something where you can now if someone's holding a bottle you can have them move the bottle you can change the bottle into something else like i want them to be holding a cat oh and they'll change the bottle into a cat yeah so (laughs) i haven't really i've experimented with that a little bit but you know i I follow ai stuff i just don't Mm -hmm. use a lot of it right yeah, it's crazy. I've been doing tons with video editing AI stuff. And yeah. and basically I'm just shooting for the like I know what the AI will do with it and I'm right. shooting for it. Yeah. And then I'm putting it in and it edits it, adds music to yeah, it. Yeah, it looks so good. Yeah, you've been showing me those compilations. So are you up are you uploading multiple clips or are you just uploading one long clip? No, I'm uploading tons of multi, like different things. And then it just cuts, 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 yep. cuts. And and it yeah. picks like you could upload two minutes of footage and it'll pick like 30 seconds of cuts yeah. and do it that way. Yeah. Um, and that's how I started. And then I went in and realizing like it has all these tools. You could add the volume yeah. on and, and you could hear what's happening in the yeah. shot. You can have lenses, filters, all sorts yeah. of things. But also you can pick and choose where the edit is based on where the AI suggested. Mm -hmm. And so if it suggested this clip, but it's, you know, like a lot of times we'll do this motion to get the shot. It'll start here and kind of end with it right there instead of starting right here and just putting more on you. So you correct it. Yeah. Um, it's so cool. I'm having a great time. It's, it's a new, it's a new hobby. (laughs) (laughs) It's a new hobby. See, Um, I like cutting B roll. Right? I like it. I like doing it by hand. Like It's really, like, it's an interesting thing. I love watching it after yeah. and just, like... Yeah. Also, I'm, we're videographers now. Right. Like, that's another thing that we can add to our heads. <laughs> you know? We're videographers. Right. It's amazing. What's one thing you're looking forward to in the upcoming year? 
one thing I'm looking forward to in the upcoming year. Probably just getting a bunch of summer content. Mm. You know, a lot of outdoor content. Um, just more video, more production work. Yeah, I actually was thinking about that recently. Basically, um, I was like, we got to get some clients that like have a park or like have like like Adventure Ohio. If you if you're a thing, Adventure Ohio, Parks Ohio, whatever you're called, hit us up. We'll do free videos. We want to come kayaking. We'll take video on the river. Um, there, there's some great opportunities. But yeah, I was thinking like downtown footage events yep. footage go to the indians game get stuff for key tower and talk about how close we are to key to uh you know the indians um so <laughs> oh <laughs> um basically Guardians. yeah no nah, i'm i'm an uh, <laughs> i'm an old indians fan um but yeah the 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 idea of being out in summer in Cleveland and just capturing that stuff it's yeah. like every time I drive by Key Tower now I'll just be going to like Edgewater and you'll see Key Tower and you're like oh let's capture that and yeah. like just turning into B-roll. Yeah, um, we should just be like, you know, so we're doing so much more video footage for all of our clients, we should just get outdoor footage for them. Right. Like why, you know. Right. I don't know. Normandy, we're going to Normandy this going week. Going to Normandy? Yeah. Um yeah, it should be really interesting. Oh, 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 oh,